my darling Crystal. I've had this fragrance created especially for you. I think it's as beautiful. Und die Vermarktung läuft. Allein im letzten Herbst ein Umsatz von 200 Millionen Dollar mit Kleidern, Bettdecken, Badetüchern, Unterwäsche und Tapeten. Und mit diesem Parfum. 150 Dollar das Fläschchen. Dazu Chuck Ashman, dem die Ideen nie ausgehen, wenn es gilt, Denver kommerziell auszuschlachten. Dynasty is not a television series. Dynasty is an attitude. Dynasty is, is a very wonderful lifestyle that when the people in Germany and the people in the United States and the people anywhere in the world want to get aggravated about how much uh, fear there is in the world, about the bomb, about not making enough money, or whether their children are staying out too late, they can say, I will go hide for an hour, I will watch Dynasty, and then, by giving them these products, we allow them to hide a little longer. That's what Dynasty merchandising is all about. It's a mask. A mask that says you may escape from all of the problems of the world. Denver also als Schnuller für die Großen, als Sonnenbrille für die überlastete Seele der Erwachsenen. Nun, der eine flieht in heile Welten, der andere in heiße Autos. John James kassierte hier eben eine Verwarnung wegen zu schnellen Fahrens. Er ist der typische Junge von nebenan, den sich wohl so manche Mutti als Schwiegersohn wünschte. Er sollte eigentlich den homosexuellen Carrington-Sohn Steven spielen, aber das Schicksal meinte es besser mit ihm und machte ihn als Jeff zum Jungstar. Für ihn wird jetzt sogar eine eigene Serie entwickelt, Arbeitstitel Denver 2, Schauplatz Los Angeles. Er lebt den California Dream. Vom ewig blauen Himmel, dem offenen Auto und dem ständig Hits spielenden Radio. Und wenn der Smog in Los Angeles zu dick wird, geht er einfach in die Luft, im eigenen Flugzeug. Sein großer Kummer, dass er als Jeff in der Serie nicht fliegen darf und die Versicherung, die den Stars sogar das Skilaufen verbietet, ihm auch privat das Fliegen nur selten erlaubt. John James ist das perfekte Abbild des kalifornischen Klischees von Sonne, Strand und ewig guter Laune. It's Jeff Colby. You have a lot of problem with women and you, I think you're on to your third wife or something. But uh, as John James, you are a one man, uh -huh. one woman man. Would you have any advice for him? For Jeff? For Jeff? Uh, yeah, I think that I, I'd tell him maybe to... Uh, he, he has too much emphasis put on, on uh, uh, finding that perfect woman. Because I think that Jeff has everything in the world other than a relationship. And a lot of times when people really want something, they forget about how about going about doing it and they just do it. And I think that's been his problem is that he just wants to get married and then he thinks about the consequences later. You see, you don't have, in real life, you don't have that. I mean, you don't think about getting married. You wait. Francis, when, wait am I gonna, when am I going to find the time to get married? I'm flying on some, uh, <laughs> driving the cars. And I know, I just, um, I think one day, sure, I'd love to have children. I think right now I'm 28, and uh, I, I still have a lot of stuff I want to do before I take on the responsibility of getting married. Hollywood ernährt die Seinen gut, jedenfalls alle, die im Geschäft sind. Den tausenden beschäftigungslosen Kleindarstellern stehen einige hundert Großverdiener gegenüber. So auch die Denver Stars. Sie kassieren pro Folge zwischen 20 und 80.000 Mark. John Forsythe im Jahr circa 3,2 Millionen. All die anderen Unbekannten vegetieren dahin. Oder bringen sich melodramatisch um wie das Starlet Peck and Whistle, das sich in den 30er Jahren vom großen D zu Tode stürzte. Wenn die Dreharbeiten demnächst nach zehn Monaten ununterbrochener Arbeit wieder für drei Monate pausieren, wenn die Stars Werbeauftritten nachjagen oder einfach Urlaub machen, werden insgesamt 115 Folgen abgedreht sein. Und ein lange Zeit erfolgloser Schauspieler aus Kanada wird glücklich seine Bankauszüge sortieren. Gordon Thompson, der Darsteller des Adam. Down 
all these years you have been a struggling unknown actor, mm -hmm. Dynasty, made you a star. How did it change your life? I think probably that 95% of all human problems stem from money or lack of money. I am 95% problem free. <laughs> yes, it's wonderful. Um, it's wonderful to be, to come from being hungry and struggling and having to lie to the gas company and having to lie to the phone company and the rent company and all the rest of it to, not, to know that you can answer the phone if you want and I was going to say, where's the check? Uh, so my priorities, I think, are in order. I'm not rich. I'm well paid. I'm not rich. I will be, I hope, if I last and the show lasts. It'd take a few more years. But uh, that's the biggest single difference. Inside, I'm happier. Money can buy happiness. It can buy happiness? <laughs> but how about the dynasty people? You know, the characters, they're all so miserable. They have I all know. this money. Poor so, things. <laughs> so you prove them different. <laughs> I think so. Well, they, you see, I think probably Blake is not as unhappy as some of his offspring. Adam is unhappy because he's not been rich, mm. but now he has money. And if he weren't so tortured, he'd be very happy. Yeah. Uh, Blake's pretty happy, yeah. I think. So what are your extravagances now? Mm. I just bought a house that has a pool. The pool is the size of this tray, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a pool and I can get wet. Um, I like very good red wine from Bordeaux. I can afford that. Um, I've never owned a car before. I drive a Volkswagen uh, that I like a lot. It could be a Daimler or a Rolls Royce for all the pleasure it gives me. I love that car because it's my first one. Uh, what else? How I can eat out and if I want caviar I can have it. Mm -hmm. And I do and I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was uh, oh, reading somewhere that Joan Collins once cornered you at a party and wanted to know your That's age. That's true. It's true. Yes. Can you tell me about that little incident? <laughs> well, if I clean it up a little bit, yes. Um, <laughs> oh, please, don't we were, clean it up. No, I have to clean it up. <laughs> it was at Pamela Sue's wedding reception when she married Manuel Rojas two and a half years ago. And... Uh, Joan and I had worked, that was, I think, in August. I'd been with the show maybe four or five weeks, that's all. And Joan and I had gotten to work together quite a lot and had a wonderful time. But we hadn't got to know each other very well. And she said, Gordon, darling, how old are you? And I had been told to say I was 28. I said, 28. And she said, you're a liar, darling. <laughs> you can fill in your own blanks. <laughs> And I said, well, yes, you're right. I'm not. And we left it at that. And then um, somehow one of the rag papers here got a hold of my age and published it, and she read it and found out. And she didn't freak out. It was yeah. no problem. But it concerned her because it might have look, looked her yes, older Yes, because Joan looks so young. She's a great beauty. She's been a movie star for a long time. Now she's the, one of the biggest stars in the entire world. And part of the reason is she's so beautiful. And she loves being beautiful. And she takes very good care of herself. And suddenly she's lumbered with this great big ox son <laughs> of 40. <laughs> well, she had to be a very hot three-year-old or whatever, you know, to, be, to have a son my age. So that's the reason. Um, it's incongruous. I mean, if you see us play together, she doesn't look at anybody's mother.